Hello, my name is Aaron Armstrong. I'm an interventional cardiologist at Adventist Health St. Helena. And today I'll be sharing some cases of using intravascular lithotripsy for treating patients with critical limb ischemia. The fourth case that I'd like to show is a 63-year-old man with a past medical history of long-standing diabetes and chronic kidney disease. He had a GFR of 30. The patient had a non-healing wound of the plantar surface of his fourth digit for approximately two months. The patient's ankle brachial index was 0.45 with a toe pressure of 22 millimeters of mercury, consistent with critical limb ischemia. The patient's baseline angiogram demonstrated a severe stenosis at the origin of the anterior tibial artery. In this angiogram here plan, you can see that there's a subtotal occlusion of the anterior tibial artery, and then there's a long occlusion of the posterior tibial artery with some reconstitution of the posterior tibial artery, but severe diffuse disease. If you look here on this farther down picture, you can appreciate the uh, severity of the disease uh, distally down near the level of the ankle. And again, the fact that there's very severe calcification uh, throughout this vessel, you can appreciate the severity of the calcium throughout each of these tibial vessels uh, as shown here on this picture on the right. So clearly in this case of long segment occlusive disease and severe calcification, we want to optimize the angiographic result. Um, there's a lot at stake here given the severity of the patient's wound and the severity of his disease. He's at a very high risk of major amputation in the absence of successful revascularization. We first um, approached the anterior tibial. I was able to uh, wire this with an 014 wire and then placed a 3.0 by 40 millimeter IVL balloon. Again, this vessel uh, was approximately 2.5 millimeters, so a 30 millimeter IVL balloon provides good vessel wall apposition. You can appreciate here that the vessel uh, and, uh, had a really severe concentric calcium and the IVL balloon initially uh, had very minimal expansion, but then over the course of 40 pulses at four atmospheres, I was able to get this balloon to uh, inflate significantly and uh, get a, a good angiographic result of balloon angioplasty to this segment. This video over here on the right demonstrates the outflow down the anterior tibial after that uh, single 40 millimeter balloon uh, inflation in the proximal anterior tibial. So really good standalone result to the anterior tibial uh, in this case. After treating the anterior tibial, I felt that it was necessary clinically to treat the posterior tibial as well, given the patient's significant disease. Uh, again, you can see here that the posterior tibial is heavily calcified. Uh, there's a long segment of disease that extends from the proximal posterior tibial to the more distal vessel. Um, this lesion segment is at least 150 millimeters. Um, but what I was able to do was go down with a 3.0 uh, millimeter uh, IVL balloon. Uh, and although the balloon itself is 40 millimeters in length, I was able to march back and provide uh, pulses at each of these levels throughout the posterior tibial occlusion. Uh, in order to treat the entire vessel segment. In these cases, I generally try to provide at least 40 uh, pulses to each of these segments before marching back the balloon in an overlapping fashion, and try to overlap the balloon by five to 10 millimeters if possible as well in order to avoid a skip segment. So this just demonstrates the uh, pulses that were delivered across the uh, posterior tibial artery with the intravascular lithotripsy balloon. This shows that final angiographic result in the posterior tibial. And you can see here that there's really excellent result. This had been a subtotally occluded vessel with very minimal distal flow initially. And after the uh, intravascular lithotripsy, there's less than 30% residual stenosis across that entire posterior tibial segment of a heavily diseased vessel. And consistent with that, the final runoff down to the level uh, of the foot demonstrates that the flow in the posterior tibial is at least as fast as the flow in the anterior tibial as well. And consistent with the revascularization in this case, the patient's wound subsequently actually healed within three weeks. So really excellent result uh, with this case as well. And uh, I think really demonstrates the power of using intravascular lithotripsy and critical limb ischemia and providing optimal outcomes to patients with advanced critical limb ischemia.